Welcome back to the Total Football Analysis YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to look at Ruben Amarin's pressing tactics at Sporting, why it's so successful and why Sporting are currently doing so well in the Portuguese top tier. But before we get stuck into the video, if you are new or you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed, make sure you like this video. Also, you can leave a comment if you have any recommendations or any feedback. But now, let's get started. Sporting operate with a defined back five and then a front three and a midfield two, whom, whilst there may be some distance between the lines in many instances, are nevertheless interweaved in ensuring certain areas of the pitch are protected and pressed. Sporting do a terrific job of maintaining space occupation during the pressing phase. Poor pressing teams will leave space behind when they press, but Sporting players have an excellent understanding of where space could potentially be created and having seven players in behind the front three gives them a strong shape to have players drop in when needed. If the press is broken and one of the central midfielders pushes out of the double pivot to press, then one of the forwards can drop in to fill the space. If the play is focused down one side, one of the forwards will follow it wide. In these instances, the opposition might look to circulate possession and work the ball to the other flank. Sporting's front five will simply rotate, with now the ball near pivot shifting out to press the wing, with the wide forward tucking into midfield. From goal kicks, they start with a pretty large gap between the front three and the rest of the team. Sporting have quick, mobile players who do an excellent job at creating an aggressive second line of press when needed. When the ball is played out wide as it is in the previous image, they ensure the first line of the press is supported and the opponent doesn't have an easy short passing option beyond the pressing player. We can see in the next image how quickly the right wing back pushes up, as well as the ball side central midfielder in ensuring there isn't comfortable possession for the opposition. Amarin also wants his back line to remain compact, which we will look at later, but to ensure they can stay relatively deep, the far side pivot is already shifting over to cover the space between the back line and the second line of the press. As the ball is played to the opposition fullback, any immediate short passing options are well covered by Sporting's aggressive shape. They opt to play down the line, where Sporting are able to commit one of their three centre backs to man marking the striker and still remain a strong back three thanks to the left wing back tucking around. At no point during the opposition build up do Sporting allow them to have time and space to play past the press. Everything is focused on forcing them to make poor decisions on the ball and either making a mistake inside their own half, which Sporting can capitalise on, or playing the ball long where Sporting can begin their patient possession game. Sporting's front three press the entirety of the opposition's back line, working as a unit preferably filtering the opposition down either flank. To do this, they remain narrow and as a result, show them away from the centre of the park. The remit of the front three is to prevent easy central passage for the opposition and then show them out wide before closing out any passing options. Sporting then look to commit players to these wide areas where they can overload the opposition and subsequently secure possession on transition. We can see that the opposition play out wide, the ball near wide forward shifts the cross and shows the player down the line. This move is followed by Sporting's right wing back shifting the cross and forwards to pick up the winger in support whilst the ball near pivot shifts the cross too. We can see this pattern in the following image, whilst the far side pivot begins to move across to fill in the central space. Finally, the right side is centre back shifts too, and there are four sporting players surrounding three opposition players. Due to the pressure and positioning of the sporting players, the ball carrier is trapped and gives away possession. When the ball is turned over, these four players can combine, or simply find a free player in the 4 versus 3 to play out, as we can see in the following image. It should also be noted that there are two sporting forwards left in a 2v2 with the opposition centre-backs. A quick break in this scenario creates an excellent counter-attacking opportunity. Whilst the front three aim to push the opponent out wide, the double pivot have to be ready to react. They initially start deep, giving sporting fantastic protection against any long balls forward, but they also need to be ready to move lateral across the pitch to create the kinds of patterns shown previously. However, they have to be ready to push forward to cover the opposition pivot as well. Sporting's front three will initially cover the pivot with their cover shadow. However, Sporting's pivots are ready to quickly cover the space. When this happens, Amarin wants to maintain protection in the centre of the pitch. Similar to how the three forwards and the double pivot work in tandem to fill in gaps for Sporting's press, Amarin's side do likewise to cover the opposition pivot. Dependent on the ball location, one of the defenders will drop in to cover the pivot pushing forward. 
If the ball is out wide, the far side wing back will drop inside to keep a double pivot. Otherwise, the centre backs are given the freedom to drop into this area. In the following image, as the ball is worked out wide, Sporting centre forward sees the opponent's pivot is shifting across and is in space. And with both Sporting pivots unable to cover this space, he is able to drop in and cover. In doing so, Sporting continue to prevent an easy way out as the opponent's right winger has possession on the flank. Similarly, any of the wide forwards can drop in and pick up the pivot and allow Sporting's own central midfielders to remain in position. Unless the opponent has a player floating around beyond Sporting's first line of press, there's no need to play with anyone in the space and Sporting will happily play with a very reserved shape behind the front three. As we can see in the image, the front three man marked the opposition back three and therefore forced the opponents to play long. With the opponent having two wide players hung in each touchline, Sporting have a 7 vs 5 overload in the centre of the pitch on the halfway line and have the upper hand in the aerial duel and on the immediate loose ball duel afterwards. Whilst their wing backs will press the wider areas, they stay deep and compact until that pass is played. The aggressive press of the front three and the mobility of the double pivot pushes the opponent to play long or wide and if it goes wide, we have seen how they shut off any passing options and if they go long, this five have the upper hand. Their ability to cover the width of the pitch also prevents any free pass that isn't an aerial duel. If the opponent does break through the press in a central area, the immediate pressure from the centre from one of the pivots and Sporting's back five covering any potential gaps for a quick pass in behind makes it very difficult for them to be broken down. To conclude, Sporting show that if a front three work well together as a unit and maintain an intense press, then wingers or significant numbers in central midfield aren't necessarily important in a defensive system. Sporting instead know they can force opponents into areas of the pitch where they can significantly reduce their chances of building up in a way that the opposition have planned to. They can lead them into wide areas where they can shut off any passing options and either turn over possession or force the opponent to play long. And that there wraps up this tactical analysis written by David Seymour, which you can find on the Total Football Analysis website. My name is RDF, it's been a pleasure recording this video for you guys, I hope to speak to you soon, don't forget if you are new or you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button or leave a comment if you have any recommendations or any feedback. Speak to you soon and stay safe.